Uh, this morning, uh, really a couple different things, but the main uh, thing we're going to look at here is this study, which I'll explain in a little bit. And also the handout you've got uh, just talks about that study, the first page, and then the uh, uh, the sheets for the soybean demo and the corn demo are on there as well. Corn and soybean demos are uh, just to the west of us here and have signs up uh, so you could go through uh, and, uh, and look at those on your leisure or uh, if there's some interest uh, we'll be out after lunch and uh, uh, we can walk through some of those uh, if you're interested to look at some of those treatments. Treatments are pretty standard. Uh, a lot of them are our uh, standard treatments and comparisons uh, and like I said the information is on your on your handout sheet you have there. Study we're looking at here is volunteer corn control in soybeans and we've done a lot of work in the past uh, both Mike McNig and Leon Reggie uh, have got years of data uh, on this uh, with the uh, the primary uh, uh, products that we look at uh, for that select and and post and fusillate and and fusion and then assure to and, and of course those. Uh, the change has kind of come about uh, where we're using in a systems approach and we're putting those products with uh, with a glyphosate products uh, uh, in a tank mix and when that happened when we were using some of the uh, adjuvants and additives particularly crop oils and some of those things we were getting uh, some uh, antagonism of the glyphosate. So a lot of the, the products now have a fully loaded uh, uh, product as far as the uh, Select Max and Post Plus and, and some of those so we can do that. The idea behind this particular study that we're looking at here comparing um, those systems uh, with nozzles uh, so we're looking at uh, basically droplet sizes uh, carriers, uh, gallonages per acre, and some, a couple of different uh, adjuvants uh, in a comparison uh, to look at what systems are going to uh, work the best. And we know uh, that uh, when we use that, that large droplet at those lower uh, uh, gallonage, gallonages, uh, uh, then we're, we're seeing some uh, issues as far as control. And the reason we did this study is that we're looking at some of the new developments uh, in some of the uh, uh, new uh, beans that we'll be seeing uh, and one of them we've been looking at is the new dicamba bean and that label will call for a larger uh, a droplet size so you're using those coarser nozzles and so the issue comes up then uh, how's that going to work in these systems so we're looking at a number of different treatments uh, here comparing uh, Select Max, in this case is the herbicide that we're using for our corn control, uh, looking at some different adjuvants, primarily uh, the NIS and Superb HC uh, are two of the, uh, the uh, additives that we're looking at. We're looking at several different nozzle sizes and, and that'll have, affect the droplet size from a, a fine to a, an ultra coarse nozzle. And and kind of going through and comparing a number of these in uh, pr across the board and then looking at a really a pretty high density of, of volunteer corn and uh, actually the dilemma we run into for the tour here today is the the treatments you see with all the corn in them are our checks and so by and large how did the rest of the treatments look everything worked which is not what I wanted to show you today <laughs> so tours over yeah. <laughs> but no we'll we'll make it work here we'll talk about some of these things because that's not always the situation as we know that that droplet size has a lot to do with uh, the coverage that we have there as well as the amount of water that we're putting out there and the effect that we're going to have and if we're going to be required if we go to uh, these dicamba beans and some of these new technologies that are coming about uh, along the seed lines and we're going to be required to go to those coarser nozzles and and some and some differences as far as carrier uh, we're, we're going to be a need to be aware of that and, and think about that as we go through. Uh, volunteer corn uh, we know that uh, uh, if we've got one volunteer corn plant per square meter out there 
from work that we've done here at SDSU that we're going to have about a two and a half percent uh, loss in, in soybean yield uh, for each uh, one of those. So, uh, you know, you go looking at that much, you look at a lot of fields where we got volunteer corn out there, you know, at uh, one per square meter, you know, that's pretty, pretty common. Now, granted, that's not common. And I asked Dave, our technician, what the uh, the rate was that he put out here on on this uh, per uh, on the plots and uh, on a per acre basis, and he said it's a bucket full per plot. So we're 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 pretty thick, and if you think about it, you know the control that we got here, you know, that was that was pretty phenomenal. We did we did it early, uh, like it, it, any good weed control program. The earlier you can get out there, the your better control that uh, uh, that you're going to have. Uh, so that's the basis of the plot. Uh, as you go through, you can kind of see the different uh, uh, different uh, combinations that we have here. Uh, but actually, if we look down here, let's see, uh, about midway, if we go to about uh, uh, plots uh, five through six and seven, let's see where we at on kind of right in here where Mark's at and over, should be the ones where we'd had some volunteer corn out here. And ideally, the ones, some of the ones we have up here, uh, would have been what we'd have as, a, as, or uh, down the line a little bit would have been what we would have more for the ideal plots. But like I said, everything looks good, and uh, so we're not going to be able to make those visual uh, comparisons uh, uh, as we're looking at it right now. Um, just kind of a note on you know the the new technology, seed technologies coming up. Uh, the last several years, we've been involved working with the companies on on uh, dicamba beans, uh, resistant beans, the 2,4-D resistant beans, and the HPPD resistant beans. So, a number of these new technologies coming uh, uh, coming about that we've looked at, and it's going to kind of change the way that we we do some of the things that we have. To kind of go into the the other part of this, as far as uh, this particular project. I'm going to turn the mic over to Mark Rosenberg and we'll pull the tractor if we can pull the tractor ahead in front of the sprayer down here uh, then we'll uh, uh, have Mark talk about uh, some of the nozzles that we're using here and uh, some of the coverage and, and droplet sizes that we have. <laughs> 